Red broadcast from Uppington. We are coming to you live from the Dr. Harry Surti Hospital, the brand new high tech. 1 billion rand establishment in the heart of the people. It is surrounded by all the people of Uppington here, high and low and everything, everyone in between. Let me tell you something. I've been standing here and witnessing some of the doctors, some of the nurses, uh, the medical personnel. They're in high spirits. Uh, a little bit earlier, Tietzi was saying that this is uh, an area of extreme high temperature and extreme low in the evening. But I tell you, only one prevails today in terms of spirits. They're all extremely high. Every Everybody's excited about this new hospital. Uh, and one of the people who are just as excited is the Premier of the Northern Cape. Uh, Sylvia Lucas, a very good morning to you. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Ayanda, and good morning to the viewers in a very nice and brisk, cool Uppington. You must never say it's hot. You must never say it's cold. It's just nice forever. No. Uh, but you were telling me a little bit earlier about the growth that this province is seeing. It is hosting Tourism Month, so spotlight very much on the Northern Cape today, uh, this month, and not only today, uh, but also economically. There's an economic boom uh, that this particular province is experiencing. So it's very fitting that such an establishment should come to pass. It is more than fitting if you, if you know that we have a very vast province. And people had to travel long distances. If you travel from Kimberley up to Garis, in one day you can travel 1,002 kilometers. And that is what people had to travel in this province to get specialized services. So this hospital is actually addressing a very, very big need in terms of making sure that people don't have to travel long distances, in terms of making sure that we don't have loss of life. Because you can imagine when someone had to be transported from Port Nalof up to Kimberley and in the process perish. That is the kind of things that we've seen. Even our ambulance drivers, some of them had to travel three o'clock in the morning from wherever they are to make sure that people are at least at Kimberley Hospital 10 o'clock in the morning. This hospital is addressing the whole of the western part of the Northern Cape, which includes the old Hantam Karua, up to Kalfinia, as well as up to the Richtersfeld. That is what this hospital is now catering for. And with all the specialized services that we have here in this hospital, people are uh, able to get the best medical attention and medical care that they actually deserve. So what I'm saying, Ayanda, is our good story continues. <laughs> you and I were joking about that a little bit earlier, that during electioneering there were all these promises that were made. It seems there's been deliveries with regard to this uh, particular hospital here. The deliverables have been accomplished. So the good story, as you say, continues. The good story continues and I must say during elections we were delivering, we were not promising. That is why we were speaking about a good story because in 20 years time we made a big difference in the lives of our people. And if we speak about the Dr. Eri Surti Hospital, we are speaking about a hospital that are giving specialized services, services that have never been given in this part of the world. If people had to get specialized services, especially in the Northern Cape, they had to travel to the Western Cape. They had to go to the Free State and they had to go to Kimberley Hospital for whatever uh, tertiary and other services they were supposed to be getting. Now we've got, uh, we are migrating from a hospital that initially started as a 40-bed hospital and eventually ended as a 180-bed hospital. And now we are migrating to a hospital that in the end will be able to accommodate more than 300 patients in different uh, areas that of, of medical care and what is also uh, uh, significant about this hospital that one of the theaters in this hospital is will be fully digital uh, techno med med medicinal and that will be one of only eight theaters in the whole of South Africa and that is what you are going to get here in Uppington in the Green Kalari. Let's speak now, we'll talk about the other infrastructure development projects that are coming up in the province, but I just wanted to wrap this one up and talk about the logistics, the contractors involved, the time period, and whether or not it met the specifications. Could you speak to us in detail about that? The mo I'm sure the MEC for Health will be able to give you more of that kind of detail. But the hospital, as it developed, it became more and more uh, necessary to make sure that we are able to give that specialized 
specialized service. But one other issue that we also had to address was the issue of accommodation to make sure if you attract the sky skills, you will be able to accommodate people. Because you can imagine in the Northern Cape, usually people used to come here and it was before this boom that we are now experiencing. That there was so much growth, there was so much development. Actually now we've got available houses and accommodation and things on all most of the areas in the province. But at this at the stage when we were planning this hospital, the people that planned it some years ago had to plan to make sure that if we attract the necessary skills, people won't have a problem of accommodation, they won't have a problem of coming here and not know where to go. So that is one of the I think more important issues that we also need to say because sometimes when you go to hospitals and doctors are telling you but I'm going to leave the province and you ask them but what is the things that will make you to stay besides your salary and things like that which is easy to address and you know one of the doctors said that in one of the provinces he, he was offered not only accommodation but also his three meals per day from the, 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 the facility where he was attached to so that is the kind of things that you don't think of it it, must, it seems small, but that is what is more important for someone, especially for, uh, for an unmarried young person coming from wherever, coming to this part of the world, that there are some things that will make them to be very happy and that will really make them uh, to, to stay and to, to, to render the services to the people of especially our rural areas. It's so true because the infrastructure is one thing, but if you don't have the manpower, the human resources, adequate, adequately trained human resources, that, that could be a problem, a, a breach in the, uh, in the system there. Uh, but in closing, what else can we look forward to in terms of infrastructure development in the province? Currently in our province, we are busy with the, uh, with the construction of some schools. In particular, we are busy with the construction of a school in, in uh, Maichisklof, in Amakwa, some libraries. In particular, we are especially in the John Taula Haitsui area. Since uh, the beginning of our term up to now, we have opened more than 40 clinics in the province where people did not have access to clinics. And in the clinics we've also addressed the principle of making sure that there are accommodation for the trained or the skilled staff that we want to, to recruit for this, for, for that uh, facilities. And uh, for next year we will be opening a similarly but on a little bit smaller scale a hospital in the R because that will now then address the eastern part, the, the, the total southeastern part of our province and we will be able to make sure that more people get access to better medical services because that yeah. is what is important yeah. for us. It's extremely important and I'm sure that that uh, development will make headlines uh, in the news and with that let's see what's making headlines at the moment in terms of your news.